Hello, once again, to my studio, where I make music. Uh, I'm Miles Cosmo, as you probably know, and uh, I did a video about my Roland System 1M a few weeks back. Well, probably more like a couple of months ago. And uh, even though I was relatively happy with what I did, um, the audio at that time was going into the Octatrack, and it started to distort a bit. I didn't really like it. Um, and I wanted to redo it, but not just redo it, I wanted to make a new one with, you know, approaching it differently. So, I've got it set up here, as you can see I've got the Octatrack down here, where I am actually using the Octatrack as a keyboard. That's just out of shot, but uh, I've got the um, channel one on, the track one on uh, MIDI track, on, fuck, on the MIDI sequencer. Uh, controlling, also, uh, controlling MIDI channel one, and I've got it on chromatic mode. Jeez, that was a bit of a mouthful. I can't believe I fucked that up so much, but anyway, let's keep going. So I've just got it on an initialized patch, um, super basic. I've got it um, without the uh, modular stuff. Like if I go to um, uh, this button here, brings up all of the lights at the top. That way I can start patching cables and stuff. Um, by the way, I've got a bit of a cold, so my voice sounds a bit shit. Um, but to that, just but if you have it off, you get uh, polyphonic mode. That's unison, sorry. So you can play four notes, um, but it's kind of, it's not true po polyphony, because I'm pretty sure it's like um, paraphonic. You only get one filter and stuff. But that's still fine for like a lot of really nice pads. Um, to demonstrate that, why don't I just dive in and make a really nice pad, because this machine actually makes really beautiful pads, I think. Um, even though that's not usually how I use it. Um, so... I think it's worth pointing out, even though I'm sure I did it in the previous video, just how nice this filter is. Without any resonance, I'll just turn the resonance up a bit. That is one smooth, creamy filter. Um, so I've only got one, os one oscillator operating at the moment, and ignore the positions of these knobs because, uh, you know, it's a digital synth. Uh, I've changed the preset to initialized one, but obviously the knobs don't snap into place. Um, so I'll, I'll just turn these down just so you know what I mean. Um, so oscillator one on an initialized patch usually starts about midway. But if we increase it, we get a drive into the filter. Which I think sounds really nice, um, but we're not going to do that for this because this is going to be a pad. So let's just, um, first thing I'm going to do, I'll leave the filter wide open again. <clears throat> and I'm going to select one of these waveforms. We've got heaps of waveforms, we've got this initial bank here, but there's a secondary bank as well. Uh, right now I'm just going to select the Super Saw one though, because it's, I mean, it's just really good for pads. So, that's the that's the one. You got a super saw, you got a super square, and you got a super triangle, so.
that's pretty nice. But let's bring in Oscillator 2. Um, but let's move on to something else. I'll just reinitialize this. Cool. Um, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure there's no way to modulate the pitch of just one oscillator. Uh, you might be able to do it actually with the uh, the modular mode. Let me think. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's going to be tricky. I'll figure that out later. Maybe it'll come to me. But um, for the moment, <clears throat> why don't we make a different patch? And let's explore some of the other wave types. So the way you access them is by hitting, uh, holding down legato while you change uh, the wave type. So this one's an FM one, and all of the waveforms, the color knob does various different things. I'm sure you've probably watched other videos about this, and I'm sure I probably mentioned this in my previous video. But um, like on the square wave, it controls pulse width, for example. But on the saw wave, it also controls like a kind of pulse width sort of sound. And on this FM one, So of course, that's the sort of thing which is going to be fun if you use like, so let's put it to pitch envelope, let's turn this off. I might just put it in a little a quick sequence. Yeah. 
So I like this one a lot because it's like a, a vocal synth. pretty ridiculous and unmusical <laughs> um, but what we might try um, is I might just turn this on I might start fucking around with some patching because that's where a lot of the real fun comes in now the, the problem is uh, I wouldn't say it's a problem but for me right now I don't have any Euro rack gear which is probably for the best uh, given my personality and penchant for new gear but um, <clears throat> What I'm going to do is just sort of patch it with itself. It's a bit limited in doing that. Like it, These are really designed, I think, to interface with other gear. Uh, and I used to have uh, an Analog 4, which used to just sit over here. I don't have that anymore. Um, I don't really regret selling it because even though it's a beautiful synth, uh, I kind of felt like I was a bit over it. Um, but it did have two CV out or four CV outs. <coughs> And I could control uh, a lot of these parameters with that, so I could have like extra LFOs or, um, I mean mainly, to be honest, what I mostly did was extra LFOs, but you could also uh, parameter lock stuff along a sequence, um, which was a really cool way to do things as well. Uh, so I can't really do that anymore. What I can do on the Octatrack is control it with MIDI, which doesn't have quite as good results, but it's still pretty cool. Um, but for the moment, I'm just gonna keep this sequence going I'm not going to talk for a bit, I'm just going to fuck around and we'll see where it goes. Alright, so let's go.
I guess I was playing the filter. <laughs> so, which you can, I think, do as well. Let's just try that. Yeah, so...
suitably insane. Um, I'm going to reinitialize again. I'm just going to quickly demonstrate uh, some of the tuning possibilities because I like to make uh, thick analog uh, detuned kind of uh, patches. So. So, I mean, you can hear the thing sounds pretty fucking incredible. Um, I love using it for basses. I, I, I frequently just use it for basses, actually. Uh, I, I sort of replaced my one oh my SH one hundred one with this, and it doesn't disappoint. Like, uh, obviously, it's I've got the SH one hundred one plug out in here as well, which I'll show pretty much right now. Um, but it's uh, on its own. It's just got so much. Th 
thick base. Actually, I'll just go through some patches real quick, which I've made, um, and we'll just have a have a listen. Every single synth should have one of these, this tone knob. Every single fucking synth should have that. I'll just quickly show you what it does. Let's turn this up. And this patch isn't even a great example of it. I'll demonstrate on another, another patch. So you get the idea. I've made some pretty great patches on this. Um, and of course, I think I make pretty good patches in general, but I mean, just the ease of use as well. Like anybody can make great patches on this thing. It's just a really great thing to use. Really fun synthesizer to use. Um, it makes me really wish I had the FM8. Uh, sorry, not FM8, fuck. The uh, System 8, <clears throat> because shit, man. Like this with like eight voices, more effects and everything. That synth uh, looks crazy to me, and I don't care, digital, analog, whatever, that thing looks like it sounds, I mean, it does sound amazing, and I wish I had one. <clears throat> I'm not exactly going to fork out $3,000 for it or whatever, so here we are, stuck with this, but happy with this. So let's click this button, um, and let's have a listen to some SH-101 patches. <laughs> So that's the initialized patch. So one of my favorite things to do on the SH-101, uh, I think I covered this on my last video about this machine, is uh, pulse width modulation.
So given that Roland have just released the, uh, I don't remember what the name of it is now, but the, the boutique uh, Roland 101. I mean, that's just this. Surely that's just the same code, you know? Um, but it sounds great. Like, it just, like, I love the 101. It's a really simple synth. Uh, I feel like maybe it's a bit overrated uh, because even though it's a beautiful sound, it's just really basic. Like, yes, there's a lot of sounds you can do with it, but also it's one oscillator. I guess the limitations of it are kind of part of its charm, though, so fair enough, but... No, 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 no,
fun with the SH101 plugin or plug out. Um, it's good stuff. I, I really like this synth. I use it a lot. Um, I like its sort of overdriven sound. Uh, it's really bassy and thick. Uh, if we go back to the other one just real quick and uh, if I go... Is it here maybe? So now we got a uh, initialized patch again. I just want to demonstrate. Um, I'll turn this arpeggiator off, which is coming from the Octatrack, by the way. This does not have an arpeggiator. Um, So this is the knob I really want to demonstrate, so... Just, it, you know, turn it left, bottom end, turn it right, uh, top end, you know, like it's... Every synth should have something like that, just a, a, a simple EQ knob. It, go, it, it just makes such a difference when you're making um, bass sounds which I will demonstrate right now firstly I'll turn up the filter envelope turn the filter down bring in some sub oscillator. I'll turn up the uh, pitch so we can hear the sub a bit better.
So I'm going to end this video in two seconds, but one thing I just want to do is compare the pulse width uh, with the plug out. I mean, I already should have demonstrated that, so uh, the pulse width on the bass uh, synth is really great as well. Let's turn the sub down. Alright, I reckon that's it. Hope you enjoyed my second installment in the Roland System 1 and I'm not sure there's heaps more to cover with it so I might just leave it at that, at least unless other people really want to know more about it. Um, if you do want specific questions asked, I, su I suggest you write in the comments because I'm never going to remember <laughs> what else, what I've done, what I haven't done, but if you need something answered uh, and you really want me to make a third video, you know, maybe that's something I can do later. Um, but that's it for now, um, so yeah, like, subscribe, comment, whatever the hell you want, I'll talk to you later, see ya.